Last month, three more members of the Hatton Garden gang were found guilty of their roles in the record-breaking heist. But one, Basil, is still on the run. We'll speak to the head of the flying squad, Detective Superintendent Craig Turner, about the latest in their hunt for Basil shortly. But first, the inside story of how the rest of the gang were caught. It's the biggest burglary in British history. There were career criminals. This was one last hurrah for them to, to, to undertake. £14 million pounds worth of jewellery, gemstones and gold stolen from the heart of the UK diamond industry. You can compare it with, um, with old boxers, you know. They retire, but they get an offer to go back in the ring one more time. And this was a big price. They would see themselves at the, the top end of criminality. The flying squad is at the top end of police investigation. On Tuesday, the 7th of April, following the Easter weekend, security guards at the Hatton Garden Safe Deposit Company arrived for work. What they discovered would trigger a major investigation by the elite flying squad. It was a burger in Hatton Garden. It was, it was going to be high value. And so we decided straight away, yes, we'd take it, get down there, assess it, and then we'll develop it from there. You know, within a few hours, it became apparent that it was a really serious crime and that it's definitely a job for us. The scale of what the thieves had got away with made headlines around the world. The flying squad were in the spotlight. We have to hit the ground running. A lot of these victims, it was clear early on, were going to be significantly financially affected by this. So straight away, there is the pressure the vast majority of people who stored property in the vault were traders in London's jewellery quarter, with much of their wealth tied up in goods. I have been through the door every single day of certainly three or four times a week for 45 years. It was quite a big part of my pension that was sitting in there, or had been sitting in there, which was now gone. The Hatton Garden investigation was a classic case of cops and robbers. Within the first day, uh, we'd already um, brought together a, a team of officers to uh, trawl CCTV in the area. They painstakingly built up a picture of how the heist happened. The gang were caught on CCTV arriving at around 7 p.m. in this white van. Then at 9.22 p.m., a mysterious red-haired man gained access to the building. To this day, it's not known exactly how he did it. Once inside, he opened the fire escape, letting the others with their builder's outfits and wheelie bins into the building. The gang then disabled the lift, allowing them to access the shaft with a clear drop straight down into the basement. It's thought the two fittest of the gang then scrambled down. Come on, Dixon. They got through other security measures to let the rest of the gang in. And soon, all that was between them and the loot was the vault door and a concrete wall, half a metre thick and reinforced with steel. To access the diamonds, they used a diamond, a specialist diamond-tipped high-powered coring drill designed to penetrate concrete and stone. Come on, let's get it on the wall. Then let's get cracking. They made a hole, 25 centimetres by 45 centimetres in the wall, just big enough for a small person to squeeze through. But they faced yet another obstacle. The back of the safe deposit boxes were bolted to the ceiling and floor and were blocking the hole and their way in. 
the hydraulic ram they bored to shift them, broke. After almost 11 hours, they gave up and left at around 8 a.m., empty-handed. To walk away from that prize when you're, when you're so close, very, very difficult, very difficult in, in, indeed. But by the same token, the longer they're in the vault, the longer they're actually on the premises, then the chances of getting caught uh, is, is raised uh, considerably. But the gang broke one of the basic rules of the criminal world by returning the following night to the scene of the crime. Using a new hydraulic ram, they were able to dislodge the metal cabinets blocking the hole. They were finally in. The hole would have been a tight squeeze. It's thought only the two who'd scrambled down the lift shaft, including the red-haired man, actually entered the vault. Once inside, they forced open 73 safety deposit boxes, filling bags and even wheelie bins with jewels, gold, precious stones and cash. They loaded up their loot and hauled it up the stairs, leaving via the fire escape. This is the moment they made their getaway with the incredible 14 million pound haul. The flying squad had the crooks in action, but who were they? Their big break in identifying them would come as a result of the thieves' critical decision to return to the crime scene that second time. That gives us a breakthrough because it led the um, CCTV officers to identify that um, on the second night they'd arrived in a Mercedes earlier. As well as the van, the gang also used this Mercedes. Detectives were able to trace it to 74-year-old John Kenny Collins. John Collins uh, has been convicted of robbery on two occasions. Second occasion, it was armed robbery on a jeweler's. He has got a significant criminal pedigree. He wrecked Hatton Garden to check out the premises. He was also the all-important getaway driver. Because John Collins was using his own vehicle, it was a Mercedes E200, very distinctive um, and very few of them on the road. It had a black roof, black wheels, and so even the grainy CCTV that probably normally wouldn't be of, of a high evidential value uh, identified and we were able to track that car. You've just got to wait until you get something that is concrete and tangible and you know is a good start point, which is what the Mercedes and Collins was, and then you commit your resources down that line. The flying squad put Collins under surveillance. He quickly led them to other members of the gang. Covert officers captured him meeting with 76-year-old Brian Reader. He's been described as the governor, the master, uh, the organiser. He's a career criminal. He would see himself at the top of the tree in this group. 